that you're totally impossible and out of control with some sort of drug problem and a fixation on what you consider Rick von Sloniker's wickedness. You're a snob, a sexist, totally obnoxious and tiresome, and lately you've gotten just weird. Why should we believe anything you say? Uh, hi, this is Christopher Walken, and you're watching Jason King on Kung Fu Hot Dog. Wow! Can I punch him in the face, please? Hello, and welcome to another video right here on his channel. If this is your first time watching my ugly mutt on this beautiful screen, don't forget to subscribe, maybe even like that video. Tell YouTube that you enjoy the content that you've watched today and that you want to see more of what this beautiful face can actually give to you. I don't know, I'll call myself ugly and beautiful at the same time. But hey, that's kind of a good introduction to the topic of today's video, which is about Aloy in Horizon Forbidden West. Who am I talking about? Now, Paul Tassi at Forbes on a 28th of December ran this headline, maybe let's stop debating the attractiveness of Aloy from Horizon Forbidden West. What is this man talking about, you may ask? So this is the face of the sequel to 2017's Horizon Zero Dawn, a game that I have, haven't completed. Uh, some of the combats can be a bit iffy now and then, and sometimes you can actually preempt what's gonna happen, which makes the uh, AI uh, react to you in a very funny way, which I kind of love. But it's a good game, it's beautifully designed, some great cutscenes, but what is the topic of debate is basically this. So this is the 2017 Aloy. As you can see, she looks fantastic. She's very attractive. She's a redhead, just like Femme Shep in Mass Effect was. Now, if you don't know the whole thing about Femme Shep in Mass Effect, there was this online uh, voting campaign from uh, Bioware about what color her hair should be, believe it or not. She should be a redhead, a brunette, or a blonde. Sounds like an edition of Playboy magazine that I remember fondly. Again, there was this whole thing from Green games, the people behind the Kill Zone series about how she should look, you know, in fact, I think one of the earlier incarnations of Aloy is that she was blonde and and it's looked a certain way. So the actress here who play, who was actually the model for the 2017 version is Hannah Hoekstra. And as you can see, it's the whole uh, appearance, the, the, the hair, well, the hair, not to a degree, but the eyes, the face. It's definitely her lightness and she looks great. And this version of Aloy is fantastic. Everybody liked her, she was great. Um, even though the game actually highlighted the theme of discrimination against the fact that she wasn't one of their tribe because she just looked different all over. And I thought that was a kind of a really good part of the game. But then I do blame to a certain degree, Neil Drutman. Now he's the guy at Naughty Dog. He's the president of Naughty Dog at the moment. And he made his real cringe speech a few years ago, which I'm going to talk about to you now. I'm going to play just an excerpt to this video, but it's absolutely cringe. And this is probably why we're having this conversation again, because it is mainly Sony who are leading the charge against making their female characters look more and more unattractive as they go along. Like, why didn't you celebrate feminism in the right way, guys? I don't understand it. It's something to be celebrated, but, you know, people just have to get their, oh, they just have to get their aura in about, oh, what the fuck, I don't like that. Oh, I really hate it. Here we go. As she grows up. Uh, and as a game creator, I look around at kind of what we are making and what are going to be her role models from, from all the stories. Have some water, Neil. Like what Jeez. <clears throat> More specifically, I'm talking about our female characters. And whether we want to admit it or not, these are role models. And yet we sexualize, we objectify, we marginalize, <sighs> and we reduce these female characters a lot less than they can be. A lot less. A lot less. Yeah, Neil says he knows what he's talking about. Right, okay. So he says that these iconic female characters are role models for girls. Well, what age of ladies are we talking about, Neil? Because these ladies come from M mature rated games. So Quiet, who's on the left here, from Hideo Kojima for Metal Gear Solid 5. Then you have uh, Cortana from uh, the Halo series. Not just eye candy, as somebody pointed out in the comments below, but she is integral to the part of helping Chief to achieve his master plan for that particular game. And Master Chief connects with uh, Cortana on a very personal level. But does Drummond talk about that? No, of course not. And then that's our lady from uh, dead or alive at the end over there but it's just that this just this kind of narrative i absolutely hate because you are seeing it now and um that's kind of why i don't really get uh, excited for video games anymore um but again this i thought was very funny so this was someone's uh 
post on Twitter after that first uh, um, Horizon Zero Dawn trailer dropped and they got the current version of Aloy and the fan version. I can see what they were, why they did it. I understand it. But obviously, in a world where you're killing di mech dinosaurs and taking out outposts, you're not going to be um, looking like Heather Locklear from 1980. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. But I thought it was funny, but it sparked a debate. Um, but what I will say is that Paul Tassi also highlights the fact that Tay Kim, who's the author that mentioned ext extolling the virtues of Aloy, it has ignored like 30 years of gaming history where, you know, you could say that Samus Aran from Metroid was the first female video game character that, you know, really landed and struck a chord with the audience. Uh, Bayonetta, uh, again, you know, is she unapologetically sexy or is she degrading or is she empowering? And people lean on empowering. Lara Croft, star of the Tomb Raider series. Now, Lara Croft, yeah, you could say she's the poster child, uh, but in the 90s when her games came out, Yes, she had incredibly large boobs, skinny waist, whatever. But that was the that was the aesthetic at the time. That was the culture at the time. Uh, personally, when I saw that, I just thought, oh, that's quite funny, actually. But it didn't make me want to go and play the games. But when they rebooted her in 2013, and, and it's interesting that when they did that, A, she still looked really hot. She looked beautiful and she was covered up. But Camilla Luddington, the voice actress behind her, even said in an interview, I wanted the, uh, the game developers to give her some shorts to wear. Now, if you're getting a beautiful actress like Camilla Luddington having that take on such an iconic character like Lara Croft, what does that tell you? Women like to see themselves. I would say most women like to see themselves portrayed in a certain positive light when it comes to entertainment. There's a lot of body shaming and a lot of demonization of the feminine form in, in entertainment, especially in video games right now. And you could argue as well that Casina Car Caradona here, she was uh, Dina in The Last of Us Part Two. Um, that's, that's her on the right, fabulous. She looks incredible. And then you've got her there on the left. So she's had a bit of a body downgrade. Why did Naughty Dog choose to do that? Our boobs are boobs so offensive that you can't have them on show anymore. But despite that, Abby, the main protagonist they force you to play as, the main female protagonist who's just overpowered and can destroy people by stamping on their heads, you are, you are treated to a, a topless scene much later on in the game, which bypassed the whole fact that Sony doesn't allow nudity in their video games, but you have it there. So a friend of mine who is playing this game, I told him about the fact that when he gets to that stage, he can simply press the skip scene option and move on. That's what I did. I hate the game actually now. I will never play it again. It's depressing. Um, if anything, it really does endorse the fact that it's great to go and kill bad guys out in the dystopian wasteland. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say here from Paul Tassie, the industry has massive, massive problems with retaining women employees and treating them well within the game development industry. And there have been indeed female characters created entirely within a male gaze. But the presentation here that Aloy is the gold standard both discounts decades of beloved females in games and simultaneously demonizes attractiveness. That is kind of the whole point here. In characters that everyone, even women, often especially women, love in their games. And this debate is not going to do anything to solve the real issues these companies face. PlayStation itself is currently facing gender discrimination claims, which the article doesn't mention. Ouch. There you go. So I guess there's probably some favoritism from Bloomberg and uh, PlayStation where that's concerned. Okay, the last thing I want to say here, folks, is this. There is such a thing as a very pretty woman. They are allowed to be pretty and feminine. That's their entitlement. The same thing with handsome fellows out there. They all want to look a certain way. There's a certain degree of vanity that they like, and they like to see this reflected in their entertainment, whether you like it or not. Now, the MCU, I've said it for a long time now, it's becoming the MCU because since they had a lot more females attending their films because of certain male eye candy, because of course it's all right to do that, they're doing the opposite with their female characters. They're dressing them down, making them look more like dudes. Now, the whole thing about Aloy's look in Horizon Forbidden West. Well, if Guerrilla Games implemented a character customization tool, then you can just tweak the version of Aloy that you want. 
that would be said and done and nobody would fuss. But of course, this is the narrative that Sony and specifically Neil Druckmann are dictating to the rest of their studios under their umbrella that you have to make the female characters a lot more un unattractive going forward because that's just how it is. And Southeast Asia, I've got to applaud that continent. They've given us great things like Squid Game and Alice in Borderland this year. And of course, they don't give a shit about the narrative the West are taking, well, specifically Sony, where video games are concerned. I mean, check out Project Eve, that trailer. That'll tell you enough. That's all I'm going to say. So if you enjoyed my little take today, folks, on this particular subject, it's insane that we're even talking about this, but it's got some traction online. I thought I'd give my 10 cents worth because frankly, that's all I'm worth at the moment. Please leave a like below, smash that subscribe button right in the nod, and I'll catch you on my next video later on, which is going to be a quick review or afterthoughts about Boba Fett, the book of. Not looking forward to it, but I'm just curious to see how Disney are slowly destroying the Star Wars franchise because if they haven't done a good enough job already they're going to do a really bad one with this particular take and again nobody asked for Boba Fett least of all me so on that one folks take care of yourself I'll catch you on the next video but I have to say I did think that there would be a point in the game where she would have to use her pants as a tourniquet and yes. then just rip them off yes, and they'd yes, be yes. like lacy hot pants. I was like, it's going to happen at some point. Like and subscribe or get your nuts Krogan crushed.